you get bonus points, you get bonus points, and you get bonus points. Hey guys, this is the last of my Grading Hacks series, a bonus fifth episode, because a few weeks ago when I was talking about the writing contest, I did not do a great job explaining it to you. So today we're gonna do a deep dive into how you can run a writing contest that is a win for your kids and a win for you. And whenever I want to show you something, you know I'm gonna build you a Prezi, and so that is what I've done. I'm gonna switch over to that right now. Oh, and always like, comment, subscribe. That'd be awesome. All right, here we go. Okay, before I get into the particulars of how the contest itself runs, let's just talk for a second about the importance of setting the right mood. So turn off the lights, turn off the music, become a game show host. You can see here a photo from my classroom last time I ran the Survive writing contest based on Survivor Island. I'll have some theme music as the kids are coming in. And by the way, I hold them out in the hallway until the bell rings so they know something's up and that gets them super excited for the launch. Uh, some years I've done a Hunger Games theme where I dressed up like Effie Trinket back when that was the thing to do. And I also have like an urban pop vibe one that I use in the spring. So whatever you do, tie it to something fun for them. Uh, and they're excited about it before they even know what it is. So once they come in and settle in, I basically say, okay, you guys, we have finished this book and now you are writing for your life. You are entered into a survivor contest where you are going to submit a paragraph on one of 10 or 11 or 12 topics, depending on how many kids. But basically I say, there's no S Essay this time around. And once they realize there's no essay after finishing a novel, they are on fire to write this paragraph and enter the contest. It's a real win-win for them because they get completion points for entering the contest with their paragraph and they can only get bonus points for winning rounds. They don't get penalized in any way if they don't advance in competition and they still have a job to do because they serve as a tribal council member or a judge of other people's papers. So it's a real win-win for them and once they realize that it's not going to hurt their grade, it's only going to help them, oh they are in it to win it. So here's what it looks like. Let's say we've just finished a novel of Mice and Men. I will sit down ahead of time and brainstorm up topics that would be great for kids meaty enough for them to chew on in terms of analyzing symbols to, to show how Steinbeck used that item or that symbol to support his greater theme. So for example, for Mice and Men, I have 10 topics here, and then I will divvy up the students into competitors on each of those topics. So they're competing against each other. So as you can see here at the very top, I've got Pravage, Fiona, and Michelle are going up against each other on the topic of the dream farm or the American dream. They'll write their paragraph on that. Likewise, I'll have Timothy, Elisa, and Zane who will be competing on analyzing just nature setting things from chapter one and chapter six. So I have got these 10 topics and I've divvied up the class three competitors per topic. Now, if you look down here, I have 31 kids in the class. So the last topic, I actually have four competitors and that's fine. That team or not, it's not a team because they're going against each other. Those competitors on that topic will just have four instead of three uh, fighting for round one survival. So this class has 31 kids. So they fit most nicely into 10 topics. If I had a bigger class, then I would increase the topic so that I have three is usually the magic number. I try to get as close to that as possible. So if I needed 11 topics, I might break up mice and rabbits into two separate categories. Or if I needed 12, I would make mice a category, I'd make rabbits a separate category, and I might break up dogs and puppies and coyotes, making coyotes a separate category. So really it's flexible depending on the size of your class and what you need. Now I generally assign them ahead of time. So this was pre-filled out when the kids came in and then I just She's like a window shade feature to like drum roll who was competing against whom. You could do a lottery also, which definitely increases the intensity of the experience. And that's a lot of fun too, game show style. Now it works best if you have more than one section of the same class. So if I'm having this contest in my freshman class, um, I need at least two for it to be optimal because first period isn't gonna grade first period's papers. That would be awkward and crunchy because you're evaluating maybe the kids sitting next to you. So instead, I try to keep the blind, I try to keep the grading blind or the marking and the feedback blind by having first period evaluate second period's papers. And on days, or I'm sorry, and on years that I have three classes, I'll have second period evaluate fifth period. And then when fifth period comes around, they'll get first period stack of papers. 
teachers. Each class doesn't know which other class they're evaluating. They'll ask, but I always tell them it's none of their business because I don't want them trying to like have like their friends in other classes will try to like convince them to like write up their papers. Uh, and I don't want any unfair ranking. I want it to be as blind as possible. And to that end, when they turn in their paragraphs, uh, it'll look something like this. I have them only use their ID numbers. So the way the contest works, Monday I announce it, I announce how it's going to work, I get, I kind of sell it, I've got the theatrics going on, I announce who the topic competitor groups are, and then they start brainstorming and writing. On Tuesday of the class, depending on what's going on, I'll book the computer lab and they'll have that class period to write and submit their paragraph at the end of the hour. Um, or they'll have finished their paragraph for homework overnight Monday. And then if we have a, like a test or a different activity happening on Tuesday, that can work fine. But what will happen is on Wednesday, they'll see papers that look like this, which is going to be handed to them for round one competition. So they only put their ID numbers on their papers to help with blind grading, you know, so Charlie isn't talking up all of his Charlie's friends in fifth period to vote for him. So ID numbers help with that. And then also they give me two copies and I'll explain why in a little bit, but you want to have uh, one copy in reserve as a clean copy for round two competition. And I'll show you that in a second. So on Wednesday, round one competition is ready to begin and topic groups sit together. So the three people who are competitors are now like a little tribal council evaluating a different class period's papers on their same topic. So if you were in the Dream Farm American Dream Team, you are, I'm sorry, competitor group, not a team, they're competitors. If you're in the American Dream Dream Far competitor group, you're now evaluating the Dream Farm American Dream papers from another class period. So they sit together and I give them the three papers from the other class period. And they will silently on their own, each one read a paper, they'll turn it over once they're done, and they'll write three constructive pieces of criticism or compliments. So if I, and by the way, you can pause the video if you want to take a closer look at the actual, you know, student sample that I have here or the comments here. So we model the comments before the competition even begins. You need to teach them how to be a good peer editor. And I have extra materials about that. I'll put the links down at the bottom, um, but I model it really heavily and feel free to use my examples here as well. If you, if you model this for your team, um, you hit the pause button and you can see the kind of feedback. I'm not going to read it to you. Um, just hit the pause and you can see the modeling that happens. Some are like pure flattery and others are, you know, couched a little sugar that wraps the medicine. All right. So the kids, the, the, the competitor teams, they sit down, they've each read it. And then once they're done, they turn it face up and they pass it to the next person in their competitor group so that all three of the kids will read and enter three comments on the backside of that classmates paper in a different class period. So at the end, there'll be nine distinct comments. If a kid agrees with something a previous person wrote, they just put a check mark next to that comment, but then they need to write their own distinct comments so that everybody gets a lot of feedback and be sure to make sure they do that. Otherwise they're just checking and not adding their own. So they have to add something you know, concrete and real that they um, could add to the conversation and help that kid. Then after the nine pieces of feedback, or in that case of the group of four, there'll be 12 pieces of, com of, of commentary on the back of the paper, then the team has to decide first, second, and third place. And this is my favorite moment of the entire week's of competition because kids get super passionate arguing on behalf of their papers and they really have to quantify what makes good writing and why this paper in my hand is better than the other paper that's sitting on the desk. And they will passionately argue and it just, it fills up my aging teacher heart to hear kids getting so excited and, you know, really specifically identifying what it is that makes up good writing and why one piece of writing is better than another. Oh, it's the best thing ever. Okay, so once that's done, they'll hand the papers back to you. You're gonna grab the first place papers from each topic, then match them up with unmarked copies of those papers from your stack. Remember, the kids gave you two copies when they entered the competition. That's how they get their completion points. The copies that you got in class today after the Wednesday round one competition are all marked up. They're written all on the back side, and probably the kids couldn't help themselves and did a little grammar scrubbing on the front side too. So you need a clean copy. So dig into your stacks, find the clean copies of the 10, 11 or 12 first place papers, depending on how many topics you have. And hate to break it to you, you are gonna spend a little time at the photocopier today after school. You need to make two copies, two more copies of each of those topics, of those first place topic team papers. Sorry, let me say that again. You need to make 
two copies of each of the first place papers so that you have three copies each. Remember, you have that clean raw copy you can use. And then you're going to have basically three copies of all of the best paragraphs because tomorrow in class you're going to need it for the next round. And yeah, it's going to take you a little bit of paper shuffling and about a half an hour at the photocopier after school, but I would much rather spend a half an hour on a Wednesday afternoon at the photocopier than spend five or six hours grading these papers on my weekend time. So it is time well spent as far as I'm concerned. Okay, round two is ready to start. Now it's Thursday in your class. You begin with tension and drama announcing the round one winners and I totally ham it up. Up, I go slow, I delay, I make them do the drum roll on the desks, and the kids are so excited when they realize that they're one of the few who won. And de depending on how many topics you have, I'll have 10 to 12 winners in that class, and they'll be beaming. After the announcement is made, um, they'll want to know who's going to win the next round, and you're like, I don't know, until the day is over, because the other classes need to evaluate. So move the desks into three large circles, because now they're turning into large tribal councils. So ideally, you you would have three circles, right? The kids could just move the desks into circles. In the real world, I never have perfect circles. They're these weird amoeba shaped desk collections, but it doesn't really matter. As soon as the three are made, every kid sits at a desk in one of the three circles or amoebas or whatever, because now they're going to be evaluating the round two competition. You made copies of all of the paragraphs yesterday after school, and now each of the three circles gets a set of papers. So there'll be 10 to 12 papers that you give to each set. Each group gets the exact same papers and all the kids will be sitting there and they will read all 10, 11, or 12 of those paragraphs silently. It is a quiet, efficient process. They are not marking anything. They're not making comments. They're not giving criticism or feedback. They are simply reading the paragraph. Then they turn the paper over and they rank it on a one to five scale, one being the lowest, five being the highest. Again, just to move it along. And, and basically they sit there, they, you know, take one down, pass it around. They all start with the paper in front of them and then they read it. They flip it over. They write a number. They flip it face up and pass it clockwise to the kid next to them. And then they wait for the kid on their left or I guess on their right to give them the next paper. And the papers just sort of slowly slide shuffle all the way around the circle until they return to the kid it started from. At the, at the end, they should have the number of scores on the backside as there are kids seated at the desk. And then you just do the math. And I have the kids do this for me. Some groups will be faster than others. So I'll be like, great, add them up. Let me know who got the highest scores. And they'll do that. And then you combine the papers from all three groups to get the grand prize winner. Then on the final day, it is big reveal time. You're going to announce the round two winners. And I generally give points to the, the third, second, and first place ultimate grand champions. After we've done that big exciting reveal, then it's time to pass back all of the marked up paragraphs from round one. Kids will be getting lots and lots of feedback, at least nine detailed copy, uh, comments from them, from their peers on things to think about. Um, I always just sort of eyeball through the stack just to make sure the feedback is in line with what I have in mind. And if it's not, I know exactly who wrote what because I know which kids were competing in which topic team. And it's not that hard to figure out handwriting from there because it's only three kids. I never have this as a problem though because I use this later in the term once we've built community and practice all these writing skills. Um, and I've modeled it. Uh, they know they have models, sentence starters, ways to kind of frame things. Um, so it generally is a really positive thing. And then we just slide into our usual Friday SSR routine, which again, I'll put um, links about my independent reading program down in the, in the notes. Okay, so. There are a ton of benefits to using this writing contest approach and feel free to vary it to make it work for you. But I have found these truths to be evident. Uh, kids work harder when they realize that peers are gonna be their audience. They scrub it clean of grammar. Uh, they take to heart um, you know, the writing advice I've given them, especially when they know it's a contest and they could win some bonus points. Seems like they care more about peer opinions than my opinion and that is quite all right. I will use that peer pressure to my advantage. Um, every kid participates in every Around. Even if a kid is a poor writer and isn't going to win, he still benefits because he's reading great writing and some not so great writing and debating writing, and he's serving as judge of other kids' writing. I'm telling you that that Wednesday debate is my favorite thing of this whole, oh my gosh, I get goosebumps when the kids start 
using the same lingo that I've used to talk about writing all semester long, and they've they synthesized it. Not easy for me to say. They have synthesized it, um, and it it's just I sit back and I just bask in the glow of beauty. Um, lots of useful feedback, more than I could give, that's for sure, uh, in a shorter amount of time. Again, the kids are exposed to a dozen or so pure papers of varying quality, some of them quite good. Uh, it only helps their grades, so tons of buy-in from them. I love it because there's some unexpected winners. Every time there's that quiet kid who just brings it and everyone's like, what? That kid just won second place, you know, won first place? Because still waters run deep, my friends. And that's the line I use in class. Uh, so it's a way for all kids to feel like they can grab that brass ring. It brings fun and rigor to our classes. And you gotta know, I created this out of desperation because I just could not grade as many papers as I needed my kids to write. So I have two versions. Um, you can buy my slides or just make your own. Basically, I've covered everything that these products <laughs> include, so I'm giving away all my secrets here. But if you want uh, some music and some slides to help you along and you want written out directions, uh, I've got the Make It Right version and then in the Survive Writing Challenge, they're the exact same materials just with a different theme. So, um, you know, buy one, don't buy both unless you want to do it once per semester. I tend to do this uh, once in the fall semester towards the end, like right before Christmas vacation. And then I do it once in the spring, uh, late May with Romeo and Juliet, right before final exams. So it works really well that way. Again, more links will be down there below if you want to check it out. All right, that's it. That's a writing contest that you can host and be the game show host with the most. All right, there you go. So this wraps up my grading hacks series. If this is the first video that you've stumbled upon, definitely go back in time, see the first four episodes. They are chock full of hacks designed to help you shave down the amount of time that you spend grading. Very necessary. As the 17-18 school year gets going, I plan to continue making YouTube videos, but I'm always at the blog over at laurarandazzo.com. Definitely check in with me over there. Tons of community, commiseration, ideas, free stuff, and you can always drop me a note over there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can with an idea or solution. All right, you guys, go make the school year great. I am here when you need me. All right, you guys, later, bye.